All right, guys, you have 2.4 pulled up. Since we already have all of the real numbers down pat, everything's good, now we're going to go throw some imaginary ones in there, okay? Um, hopefully, you guys have seen imaginary numbers a little bit in Algebra 2. If you didn't, no big deal. We're going to talk about it. But you can write imaginary numbers and you can write real numbers in what's called the complex form, okay? This is the complex form right here, A plus BI. A plus BI, where A is the real part and B is the imaginary part. So when you put them together, that's what makes a complex number. So this is just kind of explaining how you get from the square root of negative 9 minus 5 to the complex number of negative 5 plus 3i. We're going to talk about that. But anytime you have a negative underneath the square root, you know you're going to have an imaginary number. It's not a real solution. You can't put it somewhere on an xy plane. So we are going to focus on writing complex numbers in this form. The real part goes first, the imaginary part goes second. I'd rather go through examples rather than words. Um, again, this is exactly what we just said. There's an imaginary part and a real part, so complex number, the real part goes first. So let's talk about what this means. <clears throat> All right, when you have a real number, like seven, you can write that as a complex number. Seven is the real part, so you could say plus zero imaginary parts. All right, if you have an imaginary number like negative three i, you could write it as a complex number. You would have put a zero for the real part. <clears throat> so every number that you guys have ever seen can be written as a complex. It just has a, like, plus zero i on it, but we're going to talk about where, today's more about like just dealing with adding, subtracting, multiplying, that sort of a thing with imaginaries, all right? D don't try to be like, I can't, I don't, the concept of imaginary, don't worry about that. We're not graphing them or anything like that. Just understand that when you have a negative underneath the square root, you don't have an actual real zero. You can't put it on a graph. It's not an x-intercept. It's a solution, but it's just not a real solution. It's an imaginary one. So let's just kind of work through some problems here. This is what I want to do. All right, what are we doing between these two parentheses? Adding, okay? Just like you would if those i's were x's. You combine like terms. And I'm going to say this a million times. Real goes with real. So what's the real part of each one of these numbers? Three so 3 plus 2 is what? 5, okay? And then imaginary stays with imaginary. What's negative 1i plus 3i? So plus 2i. There you go. That's how you add imaginary numbers. Real goes with real. Imaginary goes with imaginary. So now look at the second thing. What are you doing right here? You're subtracting. So when you are subtracting, guys, if you subtract a polynomial, what do you do with that negative sign? You have to distribute it. I would say rewrite it. 1 plus 2i minus 4 minus 2i. Real goes with real. What's 1 minus 4? Negative 3. What's a positive 2i and a negative 2i? They cancel. 0. So you could leave it like that if you wanted to. You could put plus 0i if you wanted to. I'm fine with you just leaving it as negative 3. <clears throat> All right, again, treat the i when you're adding and subtracting like it's a variable. Pretend it's an x. You don't do anything different. You do the exact same thing. You just keep the real stuff with the real, imaginary with the imaginary. So again, I have a negative sign out in front here. What do I have to do with it? So I have 3 minus a negative is plus 2 minus 3i minus 5 plus i. Real stays with real. So 3 plus 2 is... 5, and 5 minus 5 is, that cancels, right? So you have 0. And then your imaginary part, negative 3i plus i. 2. What kind of 2? Negative 2i. If you want to just leave it as negative 2i, that's fine. If you want to put the 0, that's fine as well. But the real part goes first. The part with the i goes second. Again, look, we're adding 
and subtracting, right? We're not multiplying yet. We're going to do that in a second. <clears throat> so I have 3 plus 2i plus 4 minus i. What do I do with that negative? Distribute it. So minus 7 minus i. Real goes with real. So 3 plus 4 minus 7. 0, okay. 2i minus i minus i. Zero. What's your answer here? Zero. Just zero. Everything cancels out. That's fine. But remember, guys, real stays with real. Imaginary stays with imaginary. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right, so now we're going to talk something a little bit different. Write this down. I times I equals I squared. Right? I times I equals I squared. Does so anybody know what the value of I squared is? Negative one. Okay. Whenever you see I squared, you cross it off and make it a negative one. This I squared is the value negative one. What is the value here? What's the square root of negative one? I. I. Everybody see that? So if you have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, what happens when you multiply two square roots together? That's the same number. It cancels, right? This would become negative, the square root of negative 1 squared. So what happens to that? It cancels out. That's where that comes from. The value of negative, of i squared is negative 1. If you multiply negative, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, that gives you the square root of negative 1 squared. That cancels out. That's where you get negative 1 from. Some of you guys are like, I don't care. That's fine. I'm just telling you. <laughs> All right. So why is this important? Anytime you see I squared, what do you do? Cross it off and make it a what? Negative 1. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Anytime you see I squared, you cross it off and do what? Negative 1. Anytime you see I squared, you cross it off and what? Negative 1. I squared should never, ever, ever be in your final answer. And you'll see this in one second. So what do I do with this 5 on the outside? Distribute it. 5 times negative 2, negative 10. What's 5 times 3i? Plus 15i. Is that written in standard form? Is the real part first and the imaginary part second? Perfect. All right, what are we doing with b? You're going to FOIL. We're going to FOIL the exact same way you would FOIL any other problem. First times first. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 3i plus 6i, negative 1i and 4 is minus 4i, four. Four perfect. And what's negative i plus 3i and times the negative plus <laughs> negative i times positive 3i. Negative 3i squared. What did I tell you to do every time you see i squared? You cross it off and you change it to a what? Negative 1. So when you multiply negative 3 times negative 1, what do you get? Positive 3. Positive three. So this is what I'm going to tell you guys to do. Look, I'm going to rewrite it just because I explained it, but I want to rewrite it. So I have 8 plus 6i minus 4i. Then we have minus 3i squared, right? Anytime we have an i squared, that's the same as negative 1. So what you're in a sense going to do, guys, is you're going to cross off the i squared and change the sign in front. Every time you have i squared, you cross off the i squared and just change the sign that's in front of that number. If it's negative, it becomes positive because you're multiplying by a negative 1. So now what will happen every single time is you'll be left with real. What's 8 plus 3? 11. And then what's 6i minus 4i? Plus 2i. You will never, ever, ever, you should never have i squared ever in your answer because i squared equals negative one so just cross off the i squared change the sign in front what do you guys notice about c what do you notice about letter c are they the same but different signs okay it's like the difference of squares 
What's three times three? Nine. What's three times negative two I? Minus six I. What's two I times three? Plus six I. What's negative two I and a positive two I? Minus four I squared. I see an I squared, what do I do? Cross it off and change the sign. Cross off the I squared and change the sign. So what do you guys see happens with negative six I and positive six I? They cancel. So what's nine plus four? 13. Those are called complex conjugates. Same, same terms, different signs. Every time you multiply by them, what happens to the I's? They cancel out. All right, let's do D. What am I doing in D? Distributing. Okay, what's 4i times negative 1? Negative 4i. What's 4i times 5i? Plus 20i squared. Every time I see an i squared, I do what? Cross it off and change what? Change the sign in front of that number. Is that written in standard form? So rewrite it. Negative 20 minus 4i. What is E saying? I have 3 plus 2i how many times? Twice. Just says that quantity squared, so we're going to FOIL. What's 3 times 3? 9. What's 3 times 2i? What's 2i times 3? Plus 6i. And then what's 2i times 2i? 4i squared. Guys, every time you see an i squared, what do we do? You cross it off and change the sign in front of the number. And now it became real. So you keep real with real. What's 9 minus 4? 5. And what's 6i plus 6i? That's it. It's the exact same thing as combining like terms, foiling, that sort of thing. The only thing that's different is when you see i squared, what do you do? Cross it off and change the sign. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, I just talked about this, complex conjugates. When you have the real part's the same, the imaginary part's the same, but the signs in the middle are different, when you foil them out, <clears throat> the I's will cancel and you'll end up with a real number. Now, why is that important? Okay. Let's just multiply by the conjugate. Let's do the, the second one. What's the complex conjugate of 4 minus 3i? 4 plus 3i. So let's multiply. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 3i plus 12i. What's negative 3i and 4? Minus 12i. What's negative 3i and a positive 3i? Negative 9i squared. As soon as you see the i squared, what do we do? Cross it off and change the sign. Every single time you see I squared, cross it off and change the sign. So what is 16 plus 9? 25. And what happens with negative and positive 12i? They cancel. And you guys are like, why, why do you keep making such a big deal of this? All right. When we divide. All right. When we divide, <clears throat> you guys will see a problem. Um, let's say we have 3 plus 2i over 4 minus 3i. Okay, this is a division problem. Everybody understand that? So what we're going to turn it into is just two multiplication problems. Because, are you allowed to leave an answer like that? Yeah. No. What would you guys do? Multiply. You rationalize, right? We're going to multiply by the top and bottom. Because you cannot have a square root in the denominator. So what do you think the rule is here? You can't have what in the denominator? The you can't have an imaginary. Just like you can't have zero. You can't have an imaginary. So how are we going to get that imaginary to cancel out? Multiplying by the denominator. Not just the denominator. What am I going to multiply? By the conjugate. Because what do we want the i's to do? Cancel out. So what would be the complex conjugate to 4 minus 3i? 4 plus. 4 plus. What you do to the bottom, you do where, guys? To the top. Anytime you have a division problem, 
you multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator because you want the i's to cancel out. And you have to be fair. If you're doing something to the denominator of a fraction, you have to do it to the numerator. So I always like to do the denominator first to simplify just to make sure my i's cancel. If you guys mess up and you multiply by the same thing, you'll foil it out and you'll still have i's. So then you should be like, oh, wait a second, I did something wrong because I'm not supposed to have an i in the denominator. So let's think about this. What's 4 times 4? 16. 16. What's 4 times 3i? 12i. What's negative 3i and 4? Minus 12i. What's negative 3i and a positive 3i? Minus 9i squared. As soon as you see the i squared, what do you do? Cross it off and change the sign. Perfect. So real with real, what is 16 plus 9? 25, okay. And then what happens with 12i and negative 12i? It cancels. So is, it, is that what we wanted to happen? Is the i gone from the denominator? Yes. So now you just foil the top. What is three times four? Twelve. Three times three i. Yep. Two i times four. Eight i. And then two i times three i. Six i squared. Guys, I see an i squared. What do I do? Cross it off. Make it negative. Perfect. Then real goes with real. So twelve. Minus 6. Thank you. 6. And what's 9i plus 8i? 17i. It's a perfectly fine answer. What can you not have in the denominator? Imaginary. Imaginary. You can't have the i. How do we get rid of it? You multiply by the, by the complex conjugate. The opposite, if you want to say it. Keep the terms the same, but just change the sign in the middle. All right, on your, we'll practice this a little more, <clears throat> but you guys will have like something on your test. Don't worry about this right now. But you'll have something on your test that looks like this. Maybe you have to add them together. Okay, look, we're subtracting here, right? What do you notice is underneath the radical here? A negative. What you need to kind of get in the habit of doing is understand that this is negative 1 times 48 minus negative 1 times 27. What is the square root of negative 1? I. Okay, think about that. So when you are simplifying, if I was going to simplify radical, what times what gives me 48? Six and eight. Is there a perfect square and a non-perfect square? 16 and 3? Okay. We'll practice more of this tomorrow. What about 27? What and what? 9 and 3. Nine and three? Okay. So just how you would break down radicals. If I was going to ask you to say the square root of 48 minus the square root of 27, you would have done the same thing with 16 and 3 and 9 and 3. The only thing that's new here is the negative underneath the radical. So when you take out, God bless you, when you take out a perfect square, what's the square root of 16? 4. four. And what's the square root of negative 1? I. So 4i comes out in front, and then radical 3 stays there. Minus, what can I take out of my second square root? Yep, I get the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of negative 1 is i, so it's 3i, and my radical 3. Can you combine these two? Yes, because they both have the same radical, and what else do they both have? They both have an i. If one had an i and one didn't, you can't, because you can't combine imaginary real. It's like saying you combine x's and y's, you can't do that. So if I have 4i, root 3, and I take three of them away, how many am I left with? Just one i root three. You can write it like that. You can write a one, whatever you want to do. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you time in class to just practice this. I'm also going to post the test review so you can start working because all of this is, guys, is combining like terms. Instead of x's and y's, you have an i. Real stays with real. Imaginary stays with imaginary. <clears throat> 
What do you do when you see I squared? Cross it off and make it a one. Okay, let's do one more thing. I'm not even worry about this right now. Solve. How do we solve? The test review is due tomorrow. I'm going to change it. Okay. It's because I moved the test back. You're fine. If I'm going to solve, right, what does solve mean? Find where it crosses the x-axis. What does x equal? So if we look at a, x squared plus 4 equals 0. If this was x squared minus 4, what would you tell me my answers are? Plus or minus what? 2, okay? This is why we talked about you can't factor and get a real answer when you have x squared plus 4. Because what's going to happen here? If to solve it, you say x squared equals what? Negative 4. Then you take the square root. When you actually take the square root of a number, what do you put in front of your answer? Plus or minus. Whoops. Now think about this, guys. It's negative 1 times 4, right? What's the square root of 4? 2. Two. What's the square root of negative 1? I. When you have imaginary answers, you have to have the I with it. It's a big deal. If you just told me the answer here is plus or minus 2, that's really wrong. You're telling me that this graph would cross the x-axis at positive and negative 2. When in actuality, this never touches the x-axis. It's a parabola that moves up 4. Is it positive or negative? Is it a positive parabola or a negative one? Positive. positive. So it goes like this. It never touches the x-axis. That's what that would look like. <clears throat> So if you had B, how is B a little different than A? It's a quadratic. It's a quadratic because it's X squared, and it also has a middle term. You can't just move X's to one side, numbers to the other, and solve it. So the first thing, anytime you guys get a quadratic, what do we try to do? Factor. Try to factor it, right? Factors of positive 15 that multiply to give you positive 15 but add to give you a negative 2 if it was a negative 15 that would work but it's positive so both numbers would have to be positive or both numbers would be negative so this one doesn't factor if it said minus 5 then it would so what do we do here guys got to do the quadratic formula your a is 3 your b is negative 2 and your C is 5. The hardest part of the quadratic formula is remembering it. You guys need to know it for your test. Write it down. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. You guys have seen that a bajillion times, I know. And then we just fill it in. So I have negative, negative 2. I would fill everything in with all of the signs and then go ahead and change. Obviously, I know minus a negative is a positive and all that, but just fill everything in. So we have plus or minus negative 2 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times 3. Now, once you have it written down, you can go ahead and simplify. What's minus a negative? Positive 2, right? Plus or minus. What is negative 2 squared? 4. Minus, what's 4 times 3 times 5? 60. Good. All over 6. So you have 2 plus or minus. What's 4 minus 60? Minus 56, negative 56 over 6. So what does this tell me right now? It's imaginary. Is this quadratic going to touch the x-axis? No. You know you're going to have what letter in your answer? An I. Okay, good. So now we just break it down. Go back to Algebra 1, break it down. Can I break down 56 into a perfect square and a non-perfect square? No. Yeah. That would be something. Four? Four and what? Four and 14? Anything bigger? Seven times eight. No. Okay. So four times 14. Look what else I'm going to write underneath there. That negative one. 
I would get into the habit of making sure you make a point to say, hey, don't forget there's a negative underneath the radical because what does that negative one represent in your answer? An I, you've got to have that. So now we're going to simplify a little bit more. What is the square root of four? Two, right? What is the square root of negative one? I, so that comes out. So you have two plus or minus two I square root of 14 over six. Now, another thing that you guys are gonna mess up on and has nothing to do with pre-cal is simplifying this. <clears throat> you can't just cross off the six and one of the twos. What you really need to do is factor out what they have in common in the numerator. I think that's the easiest way to do it. What can you take out of two and two I root 14? I could take out a two. If I divide out a two, what's two divided by two? One plus or minus I square root of 14, right? Over what? Six. And then what can I simplify now? Two goes into two once, two goes into six, how many times? Three, so your answer would be one plus or minus I square root of 14 over three. There are two solutions. We knew from the beginning there was gonna be two solutions because your X was raised to what power? The second. But uh, can you put either one of these on a graph? No. So you're gonna have one on your test that is imaginary. So if you're working it out and for some reason you don't have one, you need to go back and be like, I missed something. I missed a sign somewhere, yep. You just leave it. Yeah. It, you could separate it as one third plus I root 14 over three. And that would count as one X. Okay. Or you could just leave it as one plus I root 14 over three and one minus. Okay. 